Preparations are underway for the complex job of removing nuclear fuel rods from the number four reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. A hydrogen explosion severely damaged the building following last year's massive earthquake and tsunami. More than 1,500 fuel rods must be removed from the spent fuel pool before the building can be demolished. The plant's operator will use a special crane to remove the fuel. Workers will also construct a cover to prevent radioactive materials from leaking from the building. The structure will cover the upper part of the pool. The utility will also install a filter to prevent the spread of radioactive materials. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi plant expects to complete the cover by autumn of next year. It will then remove the spent nuclear fuel from the pool and store it on the plant's premises. Mr. Hayashida is surprised. Yes, I am a professional myself, <laughs> but most people wouldn't doubt it at all if they were told that a professional had made this. A robot will be sent into the damaged Fukushima Daiichi No. 2 reactor for the first time since last year's earthquake and tsunami. Tokyo Electric Power Company will use an 80-centimeter tall robot mounted with five cameras, a dosimeter, and an audio recorder. A worker in an adjacent building will maneuver the robot through a cable link as it checks for damage to the suppression chamber and containment vessel. This will be the first inspection of the suppression chamber by a robot since the nuclear accident. A manhole will also be checked and radiation measurements taken in the area. Any damage to the suppression chamber and the containment vessel will have to be repaired before the vessel is filled with water to retrieve the melted fuel rods. Removing these rods will be a crucial step in decommissioning the reactor. Murphy's Law isn't a joke. It's an actual principle of engineering. It states basically if something can go wrong, it will. Two governors in western Japan are calling on the central government to provide further proof that it should allow the restart of some reactors at a nuclear power plant nearby. The central government wants two reactors at the Oi plant in Fukui Prefecture to go back online soon. Kyoto and Shiga Prefectures neighbor Fukui. Their governors have proposed that the central government seek independent advice from nuclear experts before making a final decision to restart the reactors. The governors say a third-party panel should verify the region's power supply and demand estimates for the summer. They also want the government to show why the reactors must be restarted before an official inquiry into the Fukushima disaster is complete. We want the central government to clarify its views and the steps it's taking. We'll see how they respond, and then we'll make our decisions. The central government has said the oil reactors meet its new safety standards. Officials say they should be reactivated to avoid power shortage this summer. That's a great comment. So, everyone, what do you think? Japan's population is shrinking faster than ever. New government figures show it declined by more than a quarter of a million people in 2011. The Internal Affairs Ministry says Japan's population as of last October 1st was almost 127.8 million. That's a drop of 259,000 or 0.2 percent from the previous year. Both the figure and the rate of decline represent the largest ever drop since comparable data became available in 1950. Economists say Japan is clawing its way back to health in a moderate recovery. But members of the Japanese think tank say the economy may soon shrink to a point where the country will no longer be considered an advanced nation. The people at the 21st Century Public Policy Institute say even in the most optimistic case, the economy will shrink to one-third the size of India's by 2050. This assumes productivity keeps growing at a steady pace. They say Japan's GDP ranking could drop to 18th in the world. That would be lower than South Korea's. The most pessimistic case suggests GDP will plunge to 28th place by 2050. The Institute has called on the government to take appropriate measures. 
including fiscal reform and tapping demand in emerging markets through free trade pacts. Japanese people should be aware that if we do nothing, the country could really be brought to ruin. But if we tackle the problems head on, the economy could regain its strength. It's been over a year since an earthquake and subsequent tsunami devastated northern Japan, killing thousands of people and severely damaging the Fukushima nuclear plant. U.S. Senator Ron Wyden is the first senator to get a look inside of Fukushima's cleanup efforts. He visited the plant a little over a week ago and joins me now. Senator Wyden, thanks so much for being on the program. Thanks for having me back. So tell us, what did you see on the ground there at Fukushima? How far along are they in the cleanup efforts and what concerns you the most? They obviously have a long, long way to go. When you go in there, you, you see hundreds of tons of debris. Uh, you have huge trucks, uh, storage tankers uh, uh, thrown about like they were my twins, uh, my four-year-old twins' toys. And uh, uh, it's very clear that there are substantial uh, health uh, questions that have to be addressed now. I'm particularly concerned about Unit 4. There are these six uh, reactors. If, for example, you had an earthquake or a tsunami hit uh, those uh, particular pools, those pools could rupture. That could mean that the fuel rods uh, could catch fire, melt down, and you'd have uh, radiation uh, in the air that would be a huge uh, challenge to control. And Senator, the Japanese are very proud people. They've often been reluctant to accept outside help in the past. Are they willing to accept international help in just, uh, uh, storing these dangerous fuel rods, or have they been uh, keeping it amongst themselves? Well, I want to commend them, for, first of all, for allowing me to, uh, to make the trip. I sit on the uh, Senate Energy Committee. I've made it clear I didn't think there was enough information getting out about uh, the cleanup. This has huge implications for nuclear power both there and, uh, and around the world. I, I do think uh, that their regulators, and, and frankly their regulators to their credit, will tell you that they are not as strong as our regulators here, the Nuclear Regulatory uh, Commission. I do think that this is something that has to be addressed quickly. The utility company, what's called TEPCO, has a 10-year plan for essentially moving the spent uh, uh, fuel rods to uh, dry, uh, dry cast, to dry storage. That, in my view, must be sped up because if uh, another earthquake or a tsunami uh, uh, hits, it could be very, very damaging, possibly more radiation than uh, earlier. What effect does this have in the United States? Could any of the radiation from there get in the water, possibly in fish or something, that would go over to California in those waters? I'm not going to speculate uh, about that. Certainly, uh, these, uh, these reactors are, are very, very close uh, uh, to the ocean. Uh, in my home state, we've long been concerned about tsunamis and, uh, and earthquakes. I think it's time to get this right. We need to focus on what kind of design there ought to be for nuclear plants, where they ought to be located. Certainly the question of putting them right next to, uh, to oceans uh, ought to be problematic uh, uh, to anyone. And those are the kinds of issues that can't be ducked any longer. The Japanese exports you feel are safe, for example, if you're a green tea drinker like I am and you get green tea from Japan, I shouldn't worry about that? I, I'm not going to make sci scientific uh, judgments. I think they've made it uh, clear that they have been able to handle much of, uh, of the radiation because it stayed within the vessels. That's one of the reasons I'm so mm -hmm. concerned about Unit 4. That is essentially outside the containment kind of process, and that's why an earthquake or tsunami could be so serious. I will tell you, Luke, that when I was visiting and we were getting on the a bus to go to the airport, people said, oh, pretty amazing, uh, uh, Ron, that you didn't have a tremor or an earthquake while you're there. I mean, this is not an abstract question. This happens very frequently there. Mm. Senator Ron Wyden from Oregon, just back from Japan and Fukushima. Thanks so much for your insight. We appreciate it.